in this video of this chapter we will learn some anatomical terms that we are going to use the first thing we need to understand is the anatomical position anatomical position when the body is standing upright feet and shoulder width are parallel and palms and toes facing forward so this is an anatomical position we need anatomical position or we are going to use it as a reference point that we always would refer to our subjects as they are in the anatomical position so the right or the left are of the subject not of our eyes for us we are watching this this is on our left but still this is the right of the subject this is the left of the subject this is the forward of the subject and so on so always we would refer to the patient or to the subject as they are always standing in their anatomical position and it doesn't matter whether they are lying down or on their back or on their tummy always we will think of them as they are in the anatomical position because this would reduce confusions and would provide a clearer communication between the workers in the health field there are also some directional terms like anterior is toward the front there is posterior toward the back there is medial that is around the midline of the body then there is lead lateral that is away from the midline of the body then there is proximal that is close to the trunk we'll use the proximal uh, with the with the limbs okay and distal that is away from the attachment of the trunk so proximal and distal proximal and distal usually we'll use them with the limbs proximal is close to the attachment of the trunk whereas distal is away from the attachment of the trunk also we have superior and inferior so superior is toward the upper part of the body inferior is toward the lower part of the body another term we have that is superficial that is closer to the surface and deep that is a little bit far from the surface like for example the skin is superficial but bones are deep and so on in addition to that there are some regional terms you need to know these terms and find them on on the models in your lab kits so i'm not going to go through them you can match them with the images and find them on your lab kits you need to know the anatomical name or the anatomical region okay and its regular name like nasal for the nose oral for the mouth and so on now what's the idea of having these sometimes difficult names again to provide a clearer communication so if you are a if you are a nurse and you are reading a report about a patient and this report is written using the body landmarks and using the anatomical terms you will read it and you will understand exactly what's wrong with the patient without no confusion or with minimum confusion on what is exactly going with the patient and any worker in the health field either it's he is or she is in us or for example in japan or in mexico or in any part of the world as long as the report is written in anatomical terms in using body landmarks so they will be able to understand it so this would provide a common language for all of the workers in the health field which would, which would reduce the confusion and mistakes in addition to that there are the body planes and the plane is an imaginary two-dimensional uh, service that passes through the body and we have three planes that we are going to study we have the sagittal plane a sagittal plane is the one that would cut the body into left and right and if it cuts the body into equal parts we will call it mid sagittal so if it goes through the nose through half of the mouth and so on that is mid sagittal however any deviation from the midline of the body we will call it parasagittal so if it goes like through the shoulder it's parasagittal if it goes through the eye that is also parasagittal so this is the sagittal plane the other plane is the frontal plane and the frontal plane would divide the body into anterior and posterior into anterior and posterior a front and back portions here with the frontal or coronal plane there is no mid coronal any cut through the frontal side would be considered as a frontal plane so either it's cutting through the toes 
or through the back of the head for example that is still a frontal cut or frontal brain the third one is the transverse with, and with the transverse we are separating the body into superior and inferior regions into superior and inferior regions and also there is no mid transverse a cut through here is transverse through here is transverse through here is a transverse cut in addition to that we need to understand that there are cavities within the body these cavities think of them are spaces that contain organs so we have do dorsal body cavities we have cranial cavity and vertebral cavity the cranial cavity would have the brain and only the brain the vertebral cavity would have the spinal cord and only the spinal cord on the ventral side or on the anterior side we have the thoracic cavity which contains the lungs the heart contains also other structures like part of the trachea part of the esophagus we have the abdominal pelvic cavity which is made of abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity there is a barrier or a separation or physical separation that is the diaphragm that separates the thoracic from the abdominal pelvic cavity however there is no separation between the abdominal and the pelvic cavity they are continuous okay that's why they are considered sometimes is one cavity abdominal pelvic cavity in the abdominal cavities we have in the abdominal cavity we have most of the digestive system organs in the pelvic cavity we have the urinary bladder and female reproductive organs these are all in the pelvic cavity now another concept we need to understand that the organs in our body are surrounded by double layers of membranes as you can see here these are called the serous membrane and the idea of this serous membrane is to reduce friction now some of these organs are constantly moving and moving they are rubbing against other organs and other tissues and some of these organs are we can say they are extremely expensive we can't afford to lose them like the heart the heart to understand that it's always pumping it means that it's always moving and the heart is surrounded by the lungs so if we keep rubbing the heart against lungs or against muscles this would destroy the heart tissue which is something we cannot afford so we will have a protection of the heart through these serous membrane. Now, if you look carefully on these serous membranes, these are double layers. Here in this picture, which is like magnifying the serous membrane, it's not that size. They are much, much smaller, but just for explanation, they magnified it. So you can see there is a layer that is touching directly the organ, right? So this membrane is called visceral membrane. Visceral, it means soft tissue. Whereas the second layer is far from the tissue. This is called the parietal. So the first layer that is always touching the organ is called visceral. And the second layer that is far from the organ is called parietal. So that's part of the name. That's always we are going to have visceral and parietal. So always visceral and parietal. Now the second part of the name, it depends on the organ. So here for the heart, it will be pericardium. So we'll have visceral pericardium and parietal pericardium. But for other organs, like the pleura, it surrounds the lungs. So the lungs are surrounded by visceral pleura and parietal pleura. Peritoneum for the digestive organs in the abdominal pelvic cavity. So we'll have again visceral peritoneum and parietal peritoneum now if we go back to here we can see that here there is a space this space or cavity is filled with fluid usually water that is going to reduce the friction this space is called based on the also the organs so it will be in this case it will be the pericardial cavity whereas in the pleura in the lungs it will be the pleural cavity in the peritoneum it will be the peritoneum cavity and so on right so for the serous membrane we understand now that they are two layers we have the visceral and we have the parietal the visceral is directly on the organ this is on the walls of the cavity and between them there is the space or the cavity lastly last two slides of this chapter there are about the abdominal regions and the quadrants this is specifically to the abdominal region because in the abdominal region, as you can see, we have so many organs. And in order to uh, simplify uh, the communication again between the patient and 
the workers in the medical field, they decided that the, the, the abdominal cavity can be divided into four quadrants. We have the right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, and left lower quadrant. As you can see, at least in the upper quadrant, at least in the upper quadrants, we have certain organs located mainly in certain quadrants, like the liver and the gallbladder are in the right upper, whereas the stomach and here will be the spleen will be in the left upper also there is the abdominal regions there are nine abdominal regions and to understand them let's do also some drawings in one note we have nine regions the central one is something called umbilical region above it it will be epigastric think of gastric means the stomach ab means above so this is the area above the stomach you can think of the stomach is here in the umbilical region so the area above it it will be the ab gastric the area beneath it it's called the hypogastric the hypogastric so hypo it means below and as we said gastric means the stomach so this is the area beneath or below the stomach so this is the center of the umbilical area or the umbilical regions. Then we have the areas on the right and the areas on the left. And for these to understand them, you need to know three terms. Here, the upper region is something called hypochondriac, hypochondriac. Then the middle would be the lumbar and the third one will be the iliac. So hypochondriac, lumbar and iliac. We have right and left of these regions. So here, this is the right hypochondriac, this is the left hypochondriac, this is the right lumbar, this is the left lumbar, and here is the right iliac, and this is the left iliac. Remember, we are saying right and left because this is in anatomical position, right? This is of anatomical position. The right and left are of the subject. So we are talking about these nine regions you need to know this for the lecture and also for the lab and also you need to know at least one example of organs within these either quadrants or within these regions you can simply look at the images and figure out these organs so this is the end of this chapter please if you have any question post it in the forum and uh, hopefully some of your classmates is able to answer it or of course you can always send me and let me know